to unless, the vicar. Unless you want to sit on a cushion. You'll get your booster seat. Oh, that's better. There you go. I'm taller than you now. <laughs> <laughs> So you could have it, so you could try and work out, I don't know what quite it would be, but why they would be in limbo. I'm not sure mm. why people are in limbo. But anyway, you could, unresolved business, that's normally what it is. It's yeah. So what you could have is that maybe the character helps them to resolve it and look at their situation mm. in a different light. Oh, See what I did Ken. there? He's good, isn't he? <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then it gets, and then it's almost like maybe he could actually help them Mm. transcend either to heaven if, if if in your stories you have heaven and hell you know in your world mm. um and it could be that some go to heaven and some go to hell but 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 at least it's resolved and then the traveler can somehow find its way out yes and that and that could be the story i guess yeah it could be and, it, and it's you know i quite like it in a story when the protagonist the main character kind of learns something about themselves yeah. in, in the process of all that yeah you know yeah, so yeah. it's all learning to trust the story or learning arc you know having a personal journey so it could be a story with a sort of personal with a personal journey yeah for the well it could the, yeah it could be that the traveler, the traveler is is a known sort of cynic he could be yeah. he could start off being grumpy you know a bit like scrooge mm. so you could build that into the story mm -hmm. and so maybe you could set the story in the village he's just come from mm. and he's been rude to the innkeeper or he's been rude to somebody mm. or she's been rude you know if male or female main character um, and then you, so in, so you don't you don't quite like the main character to begin with, mm. but then as it goes on, and then he has to or she has to have sympathy for their stories, mm. and then maybe it's like oh it's a reflection of oh my god like well, well we've just basically done a different version of Scrooge then yes because 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 <laughs> reflected back is him like or her saying but that's what I I'm like that yeah, i shouldn't yeah. treat people badly yes no i i like that that would mm. be a good a good journey for the and that's my next short story well. <laughs> there we are right there did you want um, to do another one and sometimes it's really fun isn't it okay, just to, no. to pick a random card <laughs> and sort of have a yeah have, have a an delve. explore as to what can happen and you can completely make it your own this yeah. is the really good thing about absolutely car storytelling and stories yeah you know you can you can read something and it also in its nature it is very personal so any yeah. story that you come up with is going to be different to our one and yeah. yours will be different to mine Absolutely. and you know anybody who tells a story or makes up some creative uh, work it's going to be different and personal to, to who you are yeah and, and, you, and you can lovely. and you can and the good thing about that you know coming up with different ideas is yeah you you can bring in several elements to the same story yes so this could be the core of the story but then obviously mm. if you have other things you want to bring into it mm bring them in if you can fit yeah, them in. Yeah, exactly. Or you could pick another card and have that character Multiple. then come back in. Or you could choose three and see how they might interact yeah. with each other. Yeah. That might be quite fun well, as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. There's multiple ways to use the cards. And also our intention is if we do, you know, fingers crossed, if we get funded and we can actually get these done and printed, um, We've got ideas for other lists mm -hmm. to then combine it. So we might have settings. Yeah. So it might be yeah. marshland, woods, glade, tavern, you know, town. Mm. You could have. We could actually have fifty different settings. Lovely. So then you could go right. So from this deck, where is it going to be set? Mm -hmm. Oh, in a marsh. Brilliant. Let's. And what creature is going to be there? Oh, it's the kraken. Well, that doesn't quite make sense. So you could just pick another one, okay. yeah, you know, yeah. or you know, is it, it so? And then eventually, you imagine if we had like ten different decks mm, mm -hmm. that you had things like um, magical objects, mm -hmm. magical spells, different races, you know, like dwarfs, elves, mm. you know, um, spriggans, although spriggans in this one, clericons, pixies, brownies, yeah. that kind of thing. And again, I love brownies. <laughs> hey, there we go. I knew, I knew as soon as I said it that you'd get onto cake again. And why not? And you make a mean brownie, don't you? I do. Not a mean actually. brownie, but a, yeah, a mean a brownie. Mean brownie. Oh, Did yes. you want to do a quick and do another one? Yeah, why yeah. not? Let's have a let's okay. Have a, have a sh shuffle. Shall I shuffle? We'll do you, keep do you this want to pick one, one this time? Okay, I'll pick one. You you pick one this time. Every time I pick one, though, I always pick the basilisk for some reason. <laughs> do <laughs> yeah, you? I don't know. It's, I've picked it twice before. Well, if, if you do that again, then that's going to be weird. That's maybe my spiritual animal. Yeah, as long as you don't pick your nose, that's <laughs> the main thing. Uh, right, I've shuffled. Let's do that off camera. <laughs> yes. Okay, I won't look. 
I've got, I've got a sense, got to use my my sense here. Right. Oh, it's the basilisk. No, look at this. I love that one. It's the mimic. I love that it's one. Good, isn't I it? love that one so much. Again, Rich, what a wonderful yeah, illustration. What an amazing um, illustration. It's a bit like the chair I'm sitting on, actually. I'm sure there's something <laughs> dribbling off it. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Do you need the loo? I don't know. Yeah. So the mimic, here it is. For that's right, I've already been. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. For some predators, oh. the skillful art of hiding from prey and waiting patiently for the precise moment to strike is a deadly tactic worth employing. The mimic has taken this form of hunting to the ultimate level with the ability to shapeshift to any form of in inanimate object made from any material. What? With the outward appearance of wood, stone, metal or glass, the mimic can transform into objects other people are likely to come into regular contact with. Blending into its surroundings as a wooden chair, a desk, a book or even a treasure chest. The texture of its surface and is sorry, the texture of its surface and the convincing nature of its shape shifting power will fool most people. It attacks when its unexpecting unexpecting victim is within reach of its bludgeoning pseudopod, rows of dagger like teeth and sticky adhesive excretion. Yeah. Oh, I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have that sometimes. Anyway, um, do you know what I like when you read those cards out? What's that? It covers your face up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so again, Don't fantastic. Why, so we've got this kind of idea invented, of like invited her. something seeming quite innocent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But, but again, having this kind of yeah. belter of a, of a kind of superpower yeah. to, 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 to do extraordinary things. Um, and wouldn't that be amazing if... <laughs> if <laughs> If it happened in, in, in life, you know, just imagine that. It'd be imagine really dangerous. It, it, would be, it would be very dangerous. Take a seat. Well, I'd rather stand. You're yeah. Right. <laughs> but, you know, in terms of, like, the storytelling potential of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there many, many incredible things could happen. Do, does anything, does anything, see, okay, does anything spark your imagination then for a story? Yes. Okay. I mean, the, this, it. even even the, even the, even just the, the picture itself, you know, and what a lovely comfy chair. Yeah, exactly. It looks. That's just it? about to bite that one, right? Because obviously it wouldn't show its teeth like that until it was just about to bite. But obviously Rich needed to put a little bit yeah. of horror into it. Yeah. But um, so yeah, so you would think, God, oh, that's what an inviting so chair. So I would think, yeah, I would. Th I yeah. think, I think the mimic would take on the persona, as it were, um, of the lushest, mm. comfiest. Yeah, like a um, chaise long or something. Yeah, or I, I was thinking of a bed or some kind bed, of chaise yeah. long thing or, or some kind of sofa that you can kind of nestle yourself yeah, into. Yeah, and you think, oh. You know, that's really lush and soft and comfortable. And then before you know it, you're kind yeah. of enveloped by this... Uh, the yeah, just... Creature, <laughs> you know, at, or, or suddenly maybe you kind of... You can't move in, in this lovely soft material and it sort of grips you hard yeah. and, and you can't you're get confused. out. You're confused. You're going, what's going on? Yes, exactly. It's like a Venus flytrap, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> sort of like... Because they, they must think, oh, that's really colourful. Is it colourful? It's sort of colourful, isn't it, I think? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but they kind of tickle the inside. Yeah. Like, if, like the fly and sort the, of gets in there. Yeah, and, then and it goes, kind of... oh, this is great, and then yeah. they snap. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So a, a bit like that, but it would be, it would be just, but what, would be just wonderful. It, here's, here's, a nice, well, comfy thing. What's popped into my head, you could have it, okay, mm. that you've got a master crafts person, male or female. I'm going to say he, but it could, I mean either, male or female. Um that for some reason yeah wants to exact revenge mm. maybe on a village or a town yeah okay. so he sets up shop yeah he sets up the, shop the making master, the master yeah, craftsman making these furniture but yeah, he bespoke he, furniture yeah now he would have to so how would he how would he so he would also have to have some sort of magical properties then wouldn't he he would have to somehow just trying to think how he would. So the mimic itself is a creature. Mm. So how would he get them? He he must, maybe. Oh, unless he is actually under duress, he's actually maybe there's a powerful wizard or necromancer or witch mm -hmm. or hagstress that um, 
that for some reason, again, you'd work out the finer details, that, that has a hold over this craftsman. Yes, yep. And then that wizard, which has has these mimics, has like maybe mm -hmm. creates these mimic monsters. But she needs him to be the presentable face. Because mm. maybe she feels spurned by the village, you know. She Maybe she was kicked out of the village yeah, years ago and she yeah, wants revenge. she wants revenge. But then maybe the craftsman, that, that then he's in a, quite an interesting position, isn't yeah. he? Of maybe, maybe trying to warn the people. Yeah. But the people just think the things are so lovely yes, that he's yeah. making, you yeah, know. That, that, well, well, yeah, he could know. be really grumpy. Oh, no, you wouldn't want that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like... But you know, just be careful with it. Like, yeah, you know, it's ready, look but after be it. careful. Yeah, yeah, look after it. Don't you know. don't sit on it for too long. No, <laughs> don't get yeah. too close. And the villagers are like, he's a very strange, isn't he? What's happened? He yeah. he used to really like be happy and, and praise his furniture. I quite like the craftsperson. I think yeah. that could be a really really interesting character. Yeah, that definitely there's something strange about him. Yeah, and the things that he makes. Yeah, um, aren't like any anything else. They're not, Unique. They're they're, they're not that he's his crafting skills are so good. Yeah. that you would never find another another chest of drawers like it. You'd never find another chair yeah. like it. But but of course um, we know that he's not really made them. Yes, because it's the mimic. Yeah, but they're so but good they're so, and good, they're so yeah. wonderful. And that of course he but he has to he's in that position because otherwise he's because he might have a family or she might have a family and that the witch is threatening the family. Yeah. So hence mm -hmm. why he's having to do this. Mm. And he has to, so during the court, and again with the story arc, he, the character arc, he has to somehow find a way of, of resolving this situation. Of either somehow getting rid of the witch or somehow, uh, you know, warning the people. Mm -hmm. But I always think, isn't it great when villains get, sort of caught out by their own villain like their own mm -hmm. traps yeah so do you think uh, do you think um there might be a mimic that kind of you know yeah he could he or... could somehow what he could maybe he befriends one of the mimics yeah somehow because he maybe just might start talking to them and and just go, oh, you know, you know, or maybe one of them, or the, or they just start feeling sorry for him. Yeah, maybe he talks to himself. <laughs> yeah, and working. they over, yeah, and, and they overhear of... him. Yeah, and then the mimic just sort of starts mimicking him, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like a parrot. Mm. And then maybe again, it depends on how you want to stretch the truth, but maybe they they can start to learn and think a bit more for themselves, yeah. and they start having a conversation. Yes, that would be great. And then they start feeling sympathy for him. So yeah. then they say, well, look, they realise they've been exploited by the witch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So somehow maybe you could have like a festival <laughs> of, of crafts people. Yeah. And there's a big craft fair. Mm -hmm. And he wants, he, he says to the witch, why don't you come along? You know, why don't you, um, you know, the, the the people love your stuff, your furniture. Why don't you come along? Oh, and also in in the store, you have to have it where there are people that go, that get eaten. Yeah, yeah. Along the way. Oh dear, that would be. It that would, would be, be sad. Yeah. But then he could. But say, and then it would be a mystery, wouldn't it? Like yeah. the people have been disappearing. They've just been disappearing. No trace of them because yeah, they've been eaten the by stuff in their own house. Yeah. And then they go back to the furniture again, don't they? They they yeah. transform from a mimic yeah. from from the furniture into the mimic, and then just transform again. So obviously, yeah, yeah when anyone comes to investigate. Yes. Oh. So maybe by the time the next person puts their key in the door. You yeah. Know, the thing is just just back it's to just being back a chair. To normal. <laughs> just being back to a comfy chair. It's like the ultimate crime. Yeah. The perfect crime. The perfect crime. The perfect crime. And then, and then, of course, though this this festival happens. Uh -huh, you know, this, yep. the, yeah. And the witch sort of does get lured into coming to it because they say, mm. oh, "Why don't you?" Know, he plays on her vanity. They they've praised it, and it you know I'm getting all the praise. Why don't you? Yes, they want to meet 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 the real yeah, meet, the real yeah. maker or, or or the patron the what the one yeah, that uh, yes yes the. Yes. Some sort of connection. Like he'll have to sort of work out a way to sort of to convince her to come along. Mm -hmm. And of course, the people don't know anything about that. No. But the idea being that maybe he could. What would a witch fall in love with in terms of like furniture, like a spell book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, grim, a grimoire. 
Grimoire. A grimoire, which is a collection of spells. Oh, That's what the book is. So what you could do is, yeah. He, a fantastic word. <laughs> yeah, he could actually... So because he's built up this relationship now with the mimics, one of them agrees to become a spell book. Mm -hmm. And then on his stall, you know, he's got all the different furniture. And he's, in the end, he's, he's really trying not to let people sit on it. Yes. But they're innocent. And they go, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'd rather he didn't sit on it. And he's yeah, a bit... It's for display purposes only. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, no, no, all... <laughs> yeah, don't all. touch, don't touch. Um, but I guess by then the mimics might not... They might have stopped the killing by then mm. because they might have realised that they've been exploited by the witch. So, yeah, maybe... But, but anyway... Um, but maybe they're still within their instinct. <laughs> so maybe they just have a little nibble. Yeah, they've still got the taste for it. Yeah, can't resist. It's like me with that brownie. Yeah. Um, and, and, then, yeah. and then the witch comes along and then she just can't resist this lure of this grimoire. Yeah. And then she sort of goes, Ooh. oh, I'm going to read, let me put my glasses on. And then she leans forward and then the book just goes... Like a Venus flytrap. Yeah, she gets so far into it and then... It, <laughs> yeah. And then she is gone. She's gone. Vanished in front yeah. of a huge crowd in of people, of people at this festival. Yeah. And maybe there's quite a crowd by then. And uh... and then they might go, hang on, isn't that what happened to... And then he has to... And then he can explain and say, yeah, this is yes. what happened. And is there some way of getting the people back that the mimics have eaten? <sighs> that depends on how you as a storyteller feel about that. You see, it depends how you feel about happy endings, doesn't yeah. it? Or not really. I'm, I, that's an interesting one. I'm not massively a big fan of, and then everyone comes to life again, because it's yeah, almost like there's no yeah. jeopardy. No, no. There's I, no I, real I threat. I, I feel quite torn by that yeah. as well sometimes. I wonder how you feel about it, the person watching. <laughs> yeah. Do you like um, it? Or... And also, the good thing about storytelling is you, you can also look at various alternate endings before yeah. you choose the one that you like, so yeah, you can yeah. have a good explore of your own ending yeah you know. could you could yeah you could write both endings to mm -hmm. say well which one feels right because sure. i'm very much on the instinctual ending as in which one feels a bit contrived which one you know mm -hmm. are you just doing a happy ending just to have a happy ending or does it it need for me it needs to play out how the characters are so i think for me in that instance i would say no but what you mm -hmm. then do is you have some sort of um tribute to those people mm -hmm. so you could have it that um and every year you know for, forevermore um there was the annual crafts fair in honor of the people that yeah, disappeared yeah, that's also nice yeah yes, and yes. um where they uh, i don't know have fun and mm. make have chair making competitions <laughs> <laughs> no but you know what i mean where, where you celebrate yeah. it you actually because that's a fact of life. People do die in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think... And, I, and this is what I like about folk tales, and especially, you know, when you read Grimm, the original Grimm tales, mm -hmm. the Grimm, Brother Grimm, were they? The Brothers Grimm. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. That's the other blokes. <laughs> there's, there's very harsh... There's some harsh stuff in there. Like it's for sure. It's quite dark. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I think that's good, because in life, mm. nobody gets off scot-free with tough situations they have to face yeah exactly and so. and you know these these are proper kind of grown-up storytelling cards aren't they yeah. they're, they're sort of for, for for things that you know that, that you can use to explore you, your own stories in your own style and also when you're writing stuff you don't need to like sit down and write it long form you can have no. a brainstorm or you can yeah. you can talk things through or use a little voice recorder which i do sometimes if oh, i'm do exploring stories oh, right. okay. um, and then so. you can vocalize them rather than kind of writing them down or you yeah. can do what we're doing and if you know another storyteller or somebody who yeah. likes creativity or just having yeah. a brew and you want something different to do, you, Just, you can explore things and sort of bounce ideas off each other. It's good to have that, isn't it, a sounding board? That's like when we Definitely. worked on the play for Edinburgh. Mm. It, I found that, and you know, we had Reese involved mm -hmm. and Kate involved. Um, and, and, and it's good just to bounce those ideas it off, is, and, and yes. they help shape the idea. And you riff, mm. like we've been riffing. It's mm. like it's like musicians when they jam Isn't together. It? Yeah, and I tell you what as well is fun yeah. is that if you've got a fire pit or a chimney or something mm -hmm. in your garden, mm -hmm. right, and you're having a beverage on a summer's night, yeah. and you can get the cards out yeah. and you can do a little bit of storytelling around do... the fire, yeah. um, which is really fun. We That'd did quite great. a bit of that when I went on that uh, week in the forest. I wish I'd gone as a punter. Um, they had a they had a fire. Yeah, fire. we always had an open fire every night for, for storytelling. That's great. In the daytime, it was wonderful because then you get a different atmosphere to your 
uh, to yeah. your storytelling. And again, you can use the cards, you know, just as we have to. Yeah, to well, kind definitely. Of some ideas. And I think um, settings are very important as definitely. well, because and I always, for some reason, I have no idea why. I, I'm quite, I'm very drawn to the medieval era, mm. and I just love that concept of a storyteller round a fire, mm. gather round, gather round. Which is why when I write my sto short stories, it's all set in my fictional world of Edra, fancy world. And each short story starts with my storyteller, Loquacious Macabre, who is in a tavern normally. Mm. Occasionally I put them somewhere else, you know, to start it, but normally they're in a tavern because I just it's just that drawing you in, this is storytelling, there's a crackling fire, mm. people have got a pint, and, and they're concentrating, they're listening, that they're there for that. It was the entertainment of the day, wasn't mm. it? Um, and again, I, my writing hopefully is very much written to be said out loud. Yes. You know, yes, as yeah, a storyteller. Yeah. So that that environment, yeah, that's perfect. Oh yeah, I mean, oral storytelling is lovely when you can just when you can improvise a bit and and, yeah. and you can also do that thing if there's a few of you, where you kind of do part of the story and you sort yeah, of hand yeah, it yeah. on to the next person. Or, yeah. You know, that's, well, absolutely. That's quite fun to do. Yeah. Well, this this yeah this is kind of in a way what we were doing mm. there, wasn't it? Because yes, we were just yeah. saying, well, how about this and then that. But yeah. I guess in a more formal way that there was once a frog and he lived in a wood and the frog one day said hello <laughs> <laughs> anyone seen my cake yeah. but the cake was nowhere to be found oh no but it was a magical cake that the frog needed in order to uh, to keep his magic power functioning his magic power of Singing. Exactly. He loved singing. Now, I know you don't meet many singing of frogs, but that's the kind of thing that can happen in storytelling. Exactly. So make sure you don't step on any frogs in the future. Exactly. Or nick any cake off them. <laughs> yeah, because then yeah. they won't be able to sing anymore. They won't be able to sing. And, and we won't hear their ribbit, their lovely frog chorus. Yeah, exactly. And that would be a shame. It would be a shame. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching CBBs. We'll be back next Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, with the owl and the pussycat. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But there we are. But storytelling is a wonderful thing to do, oh. and and I'm I'm I, I I love it. Well, I would say that, wouldn't I? You would say that. Um, but just to keep keep some creativity in your life, and uh, if you're a writer or if you're a storyteller, or you know, for for creativity in any job, if you're a teacher, yeah, or oh, yeah, you're in absolutely. education, you want some some ways forward of working with children or bringing some more creativity into your yep. practice in whatever form it takes yeah yeah well i i mean um, I, I i thought that yeah people that these would appeal to are obviously writers authors that that mainly would write in fantasy or folk tales um teachers like you say to sparking inspiration for their students um i guess you know youth leaders that kind of thing anyway where there's an activity that you may need it, it's certainly if, if there's a group of people as well it mm. can work with you know 10 20 30 people i guess and because there are 50 cards if it was if you needed them to work individually mm. and you've got a group of 30 kids you could give each kid a card and then say right be you know get inspired by that but mm. also um dungeon masters and games masters for role-playing games you, mm. you know about role-playing games uh yes briefly from you actually i know yeah. you're, you're a th yeah you're in can I just show you this one as well? Look, look. Yeah. Devil bird. Well, when you said the, what was it? The owl, you said something. Yeah, the owl, owl and the pussycat. Yeah, so it could be the that's owl. A, that's a totally different owl and pussycat story. And the it? succubus. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's a whole different yeah. ball game. There are two more adult cards in here, the succubus and the incubus. And they are actually devils that take on a male and female form. But if you look closely, they've actually got like claws and a serpent's tail. Yeah. But wow. they come to you at night and they sort of hypnotise you. And then what, what they're after is they want babies. They want to right. procreate to yeah. create more devil children. I see. So, yes, pro probably the more adult end of <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. storytelling we're talking here. <laughs> yeah. But, well, strangely enough. Don't have nightmares. They will. They, these are the. These, and this is a spoiler now. I've not, I'm not told anyone. These are going to feature my next short story. Oh, shh, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. That's just, that's just yeah. between you and me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so there's many people that could, you know, uh, feature. And also, um, I've had it where people have said, yeah, but they're, you know, I don't necessarily storytell, but these are just lovely cards. So if you're, in, if you're into cards, sort of collectible, yes. you know, if you're into tarot cards, I guess you would find these intriguing. In fact, a friend of mine um, online uh, called Dylan he very kindly, and also Sam, they do tarot and oracle cards. 
and they both said, God, these would make really good deck of, mm. of like Oracle cards. And I was like, really? And I went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I sent them, I uh, sent um, some images for them to, to sort of interpret. So Dylan has already done that on Facebook. He's already posted one up. He posts up the unicorn and he's written out the actual description on the back. So you can read what the card says. And then also he's done his interpretation mm. based on the description on the card. Mm. And it was really good. It was like, I was very impressed. I was thinking, because it didn't spring to my mind that you would use these of sort of guidance cards or oracle cards. But he's managed to sort of make it work. And I was like, wow, that's really impressive. Mm. And, and, and there were some comments under there. And somebody said, oh, thank you for that, Dylan. It's really given me an uplift today that I needed. Mm. And it's like, yeah. Wow! Whatever. <laughs> yeah, they are beautiful. They're so beautiful, and yeah. they're lovely, uh, lovely quality. As they well. are. It's I think, a quality card. I think you're just saying that because you want more cake. Don't I, you? Yes, basically, <laughs> I do. Speaking of which, yeah, um, is it time for a cuppa and a cake? I think it is. So we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicky. You're welcome. Thank Very you for sharing your cards. Pleasure they're, they're wonderful. To, yeah, no, it's and, my pleasure. Um, and it's always great to just you know spark some yeah. ideas. So I think I might have two short stories. <laughs> just, that's the only reason I'll, why I invited you. I will be charging commission. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be charging. I'll, I'll send you my invoice yeah, then. I won't tell her that I've written them. I won't. No. <clears throat> I'll find out though because you'll tell me, won't you? <laughs> yeah, I will tell you. So where can people, if people want to look you up, what's your social media stuff? Uh, your... My um, The branch of my storytelling work is The Listen In. Mm -hmm. So my website is thelistenin.co.uk and then from there you can uh, follow the links to Facebook and Twitter uh, or you can find out more about my work and see some images of my work and yeah. you can also follow the link to YouTube as well and Ooh. watch some, oh, yeah, you've done uh, there's some YouTube brilliant stuff for yeah. children yeah, yeah. and for adults as well. Yeah. So whatever kind of story you're into, you can just use the playlists to yeah. find uh, your kind of story but that's the listenin.co.uk to find out more information Fantastic. and it's been lovely to uh, virtually meet you <laughs> yeah, exactly so thank you so much for watching remember story spark cards mythical creatures deck live now on kickstarter go to kickstarter either search for either of those terms or i should there should be a link somewhere to do with this video you can click on the link and it will take you directly there and if you can pledge one deck is £20, and I think that's really good value for money. And hopefully we can actually get enough money to unlock the first deck, which, as I say, is the black and white deck, and then we can then order. Unfortunately, the printer said it was a 1,000 copies as a minimum order, but that means that in order to raise the money, we need, I think it's around about 150 backers. Mm. So and you'll get, you'll get, you're doing brilliant. Hopefully, we've got 62. You're on track, you're going to get there. I, I don't know, I don't know, oh, I'm I nervous. Think you are, you're going to do it. <laughs> well, hopefully, fingers crossed. So if you, yeah, if you do want to back it, um, and I mean, you don't need to, you can also just donate. So if you just think it's a great project and you don't want to give that much, you can just donate five pound, 10 pound, whatever. That will all help as well. So there we are. So, oh yes, and if we have done all these videos, there are other videos, I don't know where you're watching this from, it could be on Facebook, it could be on YouTube, but we have, I have put all the videos in one place and further details as well. Go to www.tellsfromedra.com. Thanks so much. There we Thank are. You. And may the magic of storytelling flow through you always. always. Bye. Bye. All right, put the kettle on. All right. Cake, get the cake out. Get the cake on. <laughs> Right, I've got right. stuff to do. Oh, whatever. Do you know what I mean? This is what I have to fight up with. It's very harsh. Go on. Sling, right. sling your hook. Goodbye. <laughs>